everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you um, Friday, uh, I guess we can call it evening hell, it's five something, I don't know why my clock is showing six, but just want to kind of follow up on a video I did on Emika Adoka, uh, the head coach of the Boston Celtics who has been suspended uh, for an entire season for what they are calling an inappropriate relationship and now they are scaling it out to be uh, something else which is interesting but not surprising and there are a couple of things I want to talk about that I did not really talk about on uh, yesterday when I did the video and here's the thing I, I want you to check out what I said then because I don't want to waste a whole lot of time being redundant so you can go back and check that video out um, one of the things I do want to do is uh, anytime I make a mistake or uh, uh, post something that I find out later not to be true, I do retractions. Uh, if it's a video, I do a, a video retraction. If it's something in print, I do a print retraction. Um, I'm not beyond making mistakes. And while I never mentioned the lady's name uh, in the initial video, I did post a picture that was floating around who I now understand is not the woman or women uh, that he had the uh, relationships with. She happens to be a wife of another executive, but not involved in it, from what I understand. So I have put uh, a visual on the thumb thumbnail for the previous video, so it shows she's not the one. Uh, but I'm, I want to go out and I want to acknowledge uh, that I posted that in error. Um, now, look, one of the problems that we have in looking at this and seeing what's coming out is we operate without a code. We operate without a code across the board. We don't have a code or an agenda or a plan about anything. So we don't have any standards or guidelines by which we measure one another and hold one another accountable. So when something like this happens, it actually impacts us in a way that goes far beyond paying attention to what some celebrity or person who's probably not in the tax bracket that you're in is driving you. Number one, we live vicariously through celebrities and other successful people because uh, we tend to believe that that's the close to, closest to uh, success as we see it and interpret it or define it. And so we live vicariously. That's why our celebrities tend to get away with so much before we finally throw in the towel and say, okay, this person did this, you know, whether you want to say it's R. Kelly or whoever else uh, that's doing these things. The latest thing with Tiffany Haddish and Ari uh, Spears, and, you know, I, I know that the case is dropped, but the case was settled. And it doesn't matter whether the people dropped the case or not. From what I understand, it was obvious in the video that the video was definitely out of line. So whether the people are taking the money and saying, okay, we're going to go somewhere and sit down and shut up is irrelevant. We need to have a standard. We've got to have a code that our celebrities and people in higher places are held to. Now, the problem is with this code is we can't even get on code and understanding of what should be expected from men and how we deal with women and what should be expected from women and how y'all guys deal with men. It is everybody doing what they feel they want to do and measuring everyone by their standards. So if I'm one of those people that feel like, hey, if I want to bounce around and move around, it's my business. It ain't that big of a deal. Everybody does it. Here's one of the biggest things that just trips me out about adult people. It's something that I do not allow with my kids. I've never allowed it in the house is when you get caught doing something, you don't get to point out what someone else does or what you feel someone else has done. Or if you feel someone's done something and they didn't get the same punishment as you, you don't get to do that. I'm the person who is going to determine the final outcome. 
I'm going to determine based on factors that I deem I'm going to do the best I can to communicate to you why I'm doing it and why you're getting the punish you get. But it's not going to be because, okay, this person got this and you got that. Now, there will be rules and outs. If you do this, this is going to happen. So you knew when you do it what, what was going to happen in that. But in certain instances where there are these unique nuances that sort of create uh, issues that you need to visit it. But it's so many people going around going like people do that all the time and my whole thing is yes they do and it's wrong if you are and let me tell you why it's wrong and there are people out there saying well it's not cheating if you're not married no if you have an agreement with someone and I, I, I was reared by my great grandfather a man born in 1909 he lived by a different code he raised me by that code and it's real simple. Your word is your bond. You do everything you can to live by your word. There are sometimes you're going to give your word and you over you overspoke. You can't deliver. You go to the person and say, hey, look, I tried. I can't deliver. This is what's going on. Tell me how we can fix it. But you never sit up and say something casually because you never plan on following through on it. You never mislead somebody into believing something you know you have no intent on following through on. So the moment that you sit down and you have a conversation with someone and you say we're in a monogamous relationship. Now, this is under the assumption that saying that I'm engaged means I'm in a monogamous relationship because that's how they're classifying themselves, this guy and uh, Neil alone. Okay, so with that being said, then it is, it is, forget calling it cheating, cheating, it's betrayal. It's betrayal. It is the force behind this trust. It's why there's so much distance between black men and black women. Now, not just cheating, but the whole betrayal thing. I can't trust you. I can't trust you to do what you said you were going to do. I can't trust you to ride with me the way you said you're going to ride with me. I can't trust you not to be out there banging every broad that rolls by. I can't trust you not to sit up and put your hands on me. I can't trust you not to go in our money and spend our money on bags and, 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 and boots and shit. I can't trust you. And so now we got all this distrust and we can't get along because we don't have codes and then we don't have codes then you have no standard that's universal by which you measure other people by so everybody is sitting around living by their own standard everybody is determined what 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 classifies or defines or or, or qualifies them to be a dime a high value man a high value woman and all these other terms that have popped up that allow us to use nuanced uh, points of identity and connectivity to define ourselves and make ourselves important when the truth of the matter is manhood is so much more than any one thing and manhood at the very base is about honesty it's about it's about honor it's about being able to be trusted with what you say you're going to do it doesn't mean that every time you say something you're going to be able to follow sometimes life happens but people ought to know by how you move consistently who you are so that when something does happen and it doesn't line up and they can sit up and say, oh, no, that ain't him. Something must have happened. Or no, th I mean, that ain't that ain't normally how I am. Mean, something like something's not right. You you sit up and you know by the person's character, by the way that they carried themselves, who they are. We don't have a code. Here's the other problem with without having a code. We're easily triggered. Why? Because you got a bunch of people that are interpreting this from all different directions. And guess what happens when that happens? Because we don't have a code, because we don't have a universal understanding of what is, what's manhood, what's womanhood, what's marriage, what's connectivity. Uh, are, you know, are we defining ourselves? You know, if you're in a polygamous relationship, you're in a polygamous relationship. But I believe even in polygamous relationships, from what I understand and what I've learned about it over the time that I've studied them, that's still a level of honesty you can betrayal. You don't just get to go bounce around, pop everything you want to pop. There's an understanding that is a family environment. The family is only the family. Those inside the family and the family determines who's inside the family. So it's not just I'm out popping whatever I want to pop. And there are some things going on in my uh, 23rd book. So a couple of books ago, uh, my book, Merging Souls. We talk about soul ties in this book. We talk about the spiritual implications of sexual promiscuity. We talk about the health implications of sexual promiscuity. We talk about the emotional and, and everything else. So there's spiritual, emotional, psychological, and physiological implications to 
uh, sexual promiscuity outside of what everybody thinks. You know, I'm not talking about just sexually transmitted disease. I'm talking about something deeper, something more devastating, something more long lasting. And we have issues with it. We're sitting all over the place. We don't understand it because nobody's ever taught it. Nobody's ever uh, get, took time to put it on the forefront and say, hey, this is what's happening to us. We're being damaged in so many different ways and a lot of the damage is coming from how we treat ourselves, how we handle ourselves, how we move amongst each other. The, 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 the fact that we don't value ourselves enough to value others around us who look like us. We are always gonna have these type of problems. So what am I saying? I'm saying that I have no desire to crucify the brother. Honestly, I think that uh, a year is a little bit extensive, but what I'm getting is, it's, it's not just that he did it, it's who he did it with. Supposedly, if I understand, it's one of the exec higher executives' uh, wife. I could be wrong, it could be misinformation. There's a lot of stuff floating around. But obviously, somebody has it out for him because now it's also morphing into a story of one of the women, he's there too. One of the women is saying that he's been saying inappropriate things. Now, they've had a sexual relationship that was consensual. But now that it's over, he's still shooting, you know, the hey, sexy, whatever, and she's in her feelings, or she's looking to get paid. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a cash grab. We're gonna sue the, I'm gonna sue the organization. You're gonna settle with me, or it's, it's about to be another Me Too movement. And here's the thing for everybody caping for dude, let me tell you something. Like I said, I don't wanna crucify him, uh, but I'm not one that's gonna justify what he did by saying men do it all the time. It's not a good cause or a reason to do it. It really isn't because it speaks to a lack of honor. Because if I say I'm gonna do something, then that's what I should be doing. I shouldn't be, cre now for those guys who are out there who are sitting up telling them, look, hey, I blaze you, you blaze me. Fair exchange, ain't nothing after that. No strings con uh, attached and all that. And you're straight up and you're honest from the beginning. I ain't trying to settle down, all that. That's a whole different conversation. Uh, you're being honest and upfront, but I'm gonna tell you something about that real brief and we'll visit that some other time. I don't care how much you tell a woman after a certain amount of time of spending time around you. The average woman, that's a woman out there colder than any brother that they can do that, but the average woman cannot. And to be truthfully, you're making connections you just don't realize. And those soul, connect, those soul ties are definitely being made. They're being made whether you can feel it emotionally or not. It's not an emotional experience. It's a spiritual and soul experience. And it has long-term implications. You're leaving a piece of, your, of yourself with a person you have no intentions of spending long-term, spending any time with on a long-term basis. That's a problem. We don't get it. Where everybody's just, hey, man, I'm out here. I'm partying. I'm having fun. And you're wondering why we are where we're at and we can't operate. Because of our spiritual nature. Because we are naturally more spiritually inclined. We are naturally more inclined to move with the rhythmic, electronic movement of the universe. We are more susceptible to the forces of the universe and how it impacts us. Now, on one side, that means that we have an exponential potential for power beyond any other group. But it also means that we can be negatively impacted by things that don't necessarily negatively impact them because they are not that connected to the universe. Now, I'm not going to get into that real big, but what I'm trying to tell you, this thing is so much bigger than what we see on the surface and we keep playing ourselves by playing small. We're playing small. I just want to go out and enjoy myself. That's so small. When you can literally become an extremely powerful force that literally changes the world around you and empowers those in your periphery, you want to sit up and think small. Now, granted, I've been there. I've been where, you know, I was out there wilding. When I was wilding, everybody knew I was wilding. When I'm in a monogamous relationship, I'm in a monogamous relationship. Even when the late relationship might be kicking my ass. I'm honest and I'm true to the relationship until the relationship is over. That is the truth of how I move and operate. And so what am I getting at? I'm getting at we're at a point where we are going to have to acknowledge that if we don't get on code, meaning we need to develop codes, if we don't get on code, we're going to have problems. Why? because there's no universal understanding. So when something like this happens, not only are we given passes when we should be held accountable, don't get me wrong, I have no problem with sitting up talking about the shit that Brett Favre did. 
he's shit, he's a piece of shit, will always be a piece of shit, I said this in the last video. I have never seen him other than a piece of Mississippi shit. But, you know, they happen to have a gun, you know, a, a, a cannon for an arm. And, you know, he made a good living, he, he, he made a name for himself, but he's still trash. So he is what he is. And he stole five million dollars at least from the poorest people in the country. Mississippi is the poorest state in the country. And those welfare funds were for the poorest of the poor in that state. And he took them to build a soccer stadium for his daughter's college. Now, the, um, so I don't have a problem with it. I've shared about it, I've talked about it, and I'm gonna continue to dig at that shit. But here, check this out. The reason that this is getting more press is number one, the system is built to protect the people it's protecting, first and foremost. Number two, we are polarized in how we respond. So we responded to it from our emotions. We're the ones sharing it. We're the one hyping it up. And yes, the NBA is talking about it and ESPN is talking about it. Uh, this is a coach that stepped in and immediately took a team to the finals. Uh, his team responds to him. This is huge because for them to sit him down for a year coming off of going to the finals is, is unprecedented. So it says there are a lot of politics that's going on within the organization outside of the fact that he slept with two women. And so we don't need to do that. Another thing is they played on, and they played this specifically on us, is he got suspended because he cheated on Neil Long. Neil Long had no uh, uh, influence whatsoever on why he got suspended. Now, is it an issue because she's involved? Yeah, but that's on a personal level. That's for them to deal with. Uh, that's for us to speculate on as fans. That's what fans do. I'm not one of the people to tell you. You and the people, they, when, when they put themselves in the spotlight, they understand that people are going to scrutinize what happens in their lives. That's just part of being a celebrity, part of being out in the open and being exposed as a public figure is that more people have access to your life and are going to scrutinize it. It just comes with the territory. So that's that. But what I'm getting at is he is going through what he's going through because he couldn't keep his peace in his pants. And he couldn't keep his peace in his pants in a space that he didn't create, that's created by the people we love to say are oppressing us. So if you want to play big ball in their arena, you're going to play by their rules. It's that simple. You don't get to go in their arena, stump like a big dog and just start grabbing and pissing on shit because it's not your place. It's not your territory. They're letting you run. They're giving you some space. They're giving you an opportunity to do what you do. But they're showing you now, don't get it twisted. And I don't care who you go back and look at it and know how much money you got for them people. They have a way of putting you in your place. And like I said, if you don't want to be put in your place, don't put yourself in a position for them to do it. Find your own, build your own, fight for your own, live for your own and do your own. And you may not get in there. My whole thing is I don't ever have to be accepted by them. The funny thing is they love me to death for some freaking reason until they get to see what I do with my thing. But I don't have problems getting access until I open my mouth. And then I'm, I don't bite my tongue. And so, but still, because they don't give me my platform you know google and got me once or uh, twice uh they done, they got me good real one time uh facebook every now and then because i done learned how to play underneath the radar on them i get i know i've learned how to say what i need to say and their algorithms not pick it up but youtube they got me they hit me hard and youtube is a revenue generator for me so when they hit me and took it it hit it hit, but still, what do I do? I go back, rebuild, start another, do it, do it. Why? Because it's me, it's mine. They can sit up and take the channel, but they can't take me out the game. I'll go find somewhere else to do it. I'll go find some other way to make it happen. It's gonna call some creative. We need to be creating other ways to do things anyway. When you represent 75% to 80% of the talent in the league, and you are now starting to dominate the ranks of coaching. You need to start executing more 
options as far as power. You need to start using doors that have been opened by athletes like LeBron James and uh, a few others who have set up and, 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 and demanded more, not just in money, but in the way they are moving and, they are, and being able to handle and manage their own brand. And what happens is when you become that big, you also have more of a say-so. Uh, that's why you see the differences in the NBA and the Major League Baseball versus the NFL. All, 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 we're not gonna, I'm not going to get too much more in that. I didn't mean to go this long, but hey, here's the thing. We've got to have a code. And we've got to stand by that code. And there can't be no exceptions and excuses. Well, this person is doing this. Why are we not worried about... That's those people in their business. We need to be worrying about handling ours. There's that saying, and I say it all the time, and we just don't get it. If there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. We keep getting handled because we won't deal with the enemy on the inside. We think we can just harm each other, disrespect each other, mismanage each each other and everything's going to be okay that there are no consequences for that i'm here to tell you as a human behavior expert there's absolute consequences for how we handle one another it's there's an ego system meaning that when i mistreat someone they're not the only one that's going to be impacted by me mistreating him. There's an ego ecosystem, and that goes out and that fans out. And so many people can be impacted by one encounter. And so we have a responsibility for how we manage those encounters, whether we want to or not. You know, the pimp game is all great until you look at the devastation that it's causing. The player game is great until you look at the devastation that it's causing. Until we learn to respect one another, be honest with one another, be upfront with one another, care about how one another feels, we're going to be easily manipulated, easily controlled, easily handled, and we're going to consistently see situations like this that knock us out the box. It's that simple. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable time. I'm out.